Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Coming back at you with another episode of Taking Care of Fitness Podcast. Um, This one actually is uh, something that I have seen before. I think it was maybe a year ago or two years ago. I had seen the ad or the video from Paul, Dr. Paul Saladino. If you follow him, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. He is the gentleman who was primarily big with the carnivore diet and um, still is to some extent, I guess you would say, but is also a big um, fan of the raw milk and um, a very um, high meat balance type diet with fruit. Uh, Guy's in tremendous shape. Um, He also has a lot of good information on his page with uh, hydration tips for uh, staying hydrated by using uh, watermelon juice, which is really interesting. So just uh, a really, a really good um, variety of information he has. I know he's taken his his uh, um, backlash a little bit because of his views and everything, but I guess everybody in this field to some extent is going to do it, or everybody in a field who takes a stand and has something to say is going to do it. So kudos to him um for putting out the information but what we're talking about today was his video and the information he put out there about the lululemon pants which are of course the exercise pants designed for young ladies um really unfortunate stuff to be reading about because a i personally know so many clients that wear them um and i have a lot of family members that wear them including uh you know, uh, niece, my niece, uh, sister-in-laws or uh, uh, other people that are really close to me. Um, And of course, you know, people buy these things thinking that they're, they're a good solid brand when I think they're completely and ridiculously overpriced for exercise pants. So uh, a lot of the information that uh, he was talking about are the forever chemicals that are linked to these pants, preferably in the crotch area, which is really disturbing. Um, I know he was talking about in his video how a lot of ladies do not wear underwear when they're wearing these pants. Um, and of course that would mean that the, the pants themselves, the material are resting obviously in a very sensitive area, which could potentially, uh, lead to those chemicals getting inside the body, obviously. So that's really disturbing. Number one. And um, it's also disturbing because forever chemicals are something you seem to be showing up everywhere, whether it's in the drinking water, whether it's in these pants now and other areas. Just the term forever chemicals really has a disturbing aura about it. Uh, Personally, I need to look into why they're called that. I guess um, I guess it has to do with the fact that your body is going to have trouble expelling them to some extent, or it's going to take a lot for your body to expel them. Or uh, maybe the more that you are around them, consume them, or uh, have things near you that are pushing them into your system or have the potential to, um, only increases it the more you do it. So either way, it's very disturbing. But I have found a lot of articles um, talking about this with Lululemon. It seems to me that it's been something that's been going around for a long time with them. And um, that's really disturbing. I can't understand why exactly you would be manufacturing these pants with these chemicals in the crotch area. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But then again, I'm not a scientist or a physicist or I'm not in the the fashion industry. But for that matter, uh, first off, just from a, 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 a outsider's perspective, I don't, of course, wear exercise pants you know i know under armor who has made exercise wear dry fit uh and various other ones uh that that was the only ones that i was wearing that was really big but i guess these pants were targeted mainly to to women so that being said i can't understand why in manufacturing these chemicals would be needed to be put especially into that area. Why exactly is that happening? I guess that's always my question. When I see a lot of these things, it would be the same thing for the drinking water or other products. Question is why? And I'm sure that there is some type of answer out there that's going to be purely scientific and purely 
in the range of for the preservation of the material or the food and that's where it seems to be always going and i still don't understand and i guess where there is um where there is room to make lots of profits there's always unfortunately a lot of these shortcuts and a lot of these negative things that go into a lot of products because the times that we live in are very fast moving and therefore with all these moving parts only in 24 hours a day what we're trying to do is get information out there as quick as possible get things out there as quick as possible make the dollar save the money make the dollar save the money and keep pumping it out and it becomes this vicious circle in some areas and it's never enough meanwhile the efficacy is what always is lacking and i think that's been a reoccurring thing in our society for very long especially when you look uh, in terms of food, in terms of water, in terms of, you know, various other things that we have in our society today that weren't there hundreds of years ago, perhaps. That's why I always feel that hundreds of years ago, whether we're talking maybe, you know, 1800s, early 1900s, 1700s, 1600s, and therefore on and on, you probably had for the most part the more natural of the food because of the soil having a lot of the nutrients in it being very dense in it there hadn't been any poisons or chemicals pumped into them and over time of course we know that the soil sometimes loses uh more it can be less nutrients based and i think that you know farming practices and whatnot were more natural probably in terms of um certain farms that go mostly organic uh, or natural with the open range for the animals and whatnot. So obviously, as we have made progress, population has increased. And therefore, in order to fill the population or fulfill obligations to the population, there have been quicker practices in order to get things out to them that haven't followed the best of ways or the most efficacy type practices. And the thing, thought that comes to mind, if you've ever seen that wonderful movie with um, Michael Keaton, the founder, where he plays Ray Kroc, the gentleman who uh, was a huge proponent of expanding the McDonald's name and brand. There's this part where he's talking about how the electricity bill for the ice cream, for the freezer that's holding the ice cream, because uh, McDonald's used to actually have uh, real ice cream. For their shakes, I don't know if they do that anymore. I don't eat McDonald's, but the electricity bill was astronomical. So they came up with a way to kind of surpass that. And that's where they came in with the powdered milkshake. And of course, you know, the powdered milkshake was full of chemicals and artificial preservatives and whatnot. And it was a faster, quicker, cheaper way. So you, you kind of have to expect this to happen, you know. But it's good to see that there is regenerative farming still out there. I mentioned them before, white oak pastures and other farms that are trying their best to do what nature and God intended when, in terms of the animals, in terms of the land and the efficacy. It's good that we still have that, and that's what we need more of. Now, transfer that over to this. We need the same thing because, obviously, we know that this is a huge business, uh, and not even just, you know, one area but combine all the areas of fitness that you can whether it's you combine yoga whether it's you combine pilates whether it's you combine you know weightlifting, uh all these contests tough mother all these things think about all the people all the females primarily who are wearing these pants that you know could possibly have these forever chemicals in them it's really disturbing you can find various articles um about this uh just by searching I came upon one that was interesting. I'm going to put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the link below. Uh, this is from a website called Green Matters. I would think that they are, I guess, somewhat um, in the field of, uh, you know, maybe veganism, vegetarian, or doing all things that have to relate to a better world, um, you know, being better to the environment. But uh, the article reads, fans of the luxury athletic brand Lululemon are in for a surprise after a report was published showing that the company's popular leggings have tested positive for PFAS, a.k.a. Forever Chemicals, are per and polyfluoro, 
alkyl substances used to manufacture certain items. These substances have been linked to cancer and other health concerns, making their presence in the clothing particularly alarming for some. Unfortunately, Lululemon wasn't the only brand to test positive during the study. Wow, that's disturbing. I'm not surprising, though. January of 2022, measurable amounts of PFAs were found during a test conducted by a third-party lab hired by Momovation. According to the report, 32 items from a few different brands were sent for testing. The EPA-certified lab came back with positive findings on many of the brands tested, including Athleta Girl Chit Chat Shorts, Booty Motivate Three and a Half High Waist Tights. It's a really nice name. Gaim High Raise Waist Yoga Pants, Performance Compression Workout Leggings, NYX High Tech High Raise Leggings, Lululemon Align High Rise Pant, Lula Row Leggings, Old Navy Athletic Pants. Man, that's surprising. That's disappointing. And they sell them for a, a lot cheaper than they do Lululemon. Oya, Femtech Apparel Yoga Pants, Vuare Elevation Performance, Black Camel Athletic Wearings, Yoga Licious Luxe High Waist Side Pocket Capri. Momovation's top three recommendations PFA free and largely plastic free leggings are Groceries Apparels, Naomi High Waist Leggings, Mate, the label Organic Stretch Leggings, Packed Organic Leggings. Please note a follow-up study has yet to be completed that replicates Momovation's findings. Of course, they're always going to have follow-up studies done to these to obviously to see if a lot of these um, hold water. Because there are so many different types of PFAs out there, Momovation had the lab test specifically for fluorine, a substance that is found in all known forever chemicals. They tested each pair of pants in the crotch area because they said that this is the most common place where fluorine is found. Here's my question. Why? Is it because I would think that that chemical is there to maybe suppress sweat or scent or smell after time of constant use when you're sweaty in a certain area? The location where these chemicals were found is particularly concerned to eco-influencers like Paul Saudi, who know that women don't typically wear underwear with these types of pants, which could further expose them to PFAs, which have been linked to hormone disruption, cancer, and more. Scary part of these findings is that it's unlikely that Lululemon was adding PFAs as part of their manufacturing process. In fact, the substances are on their official restricted substance list, which means that it's more than likely that the forever chemicals are just so persuasive that they made their way into the products another way. Question is how? How could they make their way in there? Uh, is there a Lululemon PFA, PFAS lawsuit March 2023? The Center for Environmental Health announced plans to sue Lululemon over the presence of PFAS in their clothes. Legal paperwork has been filed in California, but it doesn't appear that there are any updates on the case as of yet. Whether or not more people decide to follow suit will likely be determined by how successful the Center for Environmental Health's effort are in this regard, or if they're paid off by Lululemon, or if as of now, one thing remains clear. If you're looking to avoid purchasing clothing that contains PFAs, you may have to work a little harder to find them. Isn't that the case with everything? And that's okay. You always got to dig to get what you want when it's the best quality. Uh, just looking at, you know, Lululemon pants. I mean, I found a pair of pants right here. Lululemon casual smooth pants, $148. Who the fuck is going to pay $148 for exercise pants? Here's a pair for $50. Here's a pair for $118, $118, $148, $99. That's ridiculous. And I'll tell you what it is. It's more of a fucking fad, to tell you the truth. You don't need exercise pants to exercise. Get a pair of sweatpants. Cut them if you want. Make them baggy. You could probably get them for ten dollars. You don't have to worry about PFA chemicals in the crotch stuff crawling up your seesaw. You don't need that, right? You don't have to worry about that. Or get a pair of shorts, regular shorts, and go train. You don't need exercise pants. Plus, I can't stand watching people wear exercise pants, men and women. It makes me hot. It makes my testicles scream. Please take me off. Okay, I can't understand these silly fads that are followed because other people do them. Or because of the way that they're put out there for others. 
I guess a lot of it has to do with the way it makes a lot of chicks' asses look. You know, honestly, man, are you really going to pay $148 because of the way a pair of pants sculpt your ass or help your ass feel? Or maybe because it makes your ass look a little better or because you want to show the world everything? Like, listen, there's other ways to do that if that's if that's the music you dig. You feel me? But to be getting ripped off like that, plus you don't know what's in the crotch of those pants, I think I'll take my business elsewhere and be smarter about it. Again, hundreds of years ago, they didn't have Lululemon pants. They were exercising with whatever they had. So I always feel that years ago, before technology altogether, Became what it is, and it is a blessing. Um, things were better. Efficacy of food, efficacy of water, air. While I'm sure there was still some shenanigans, it was better then. So, I'm going to put this link and the Paul Saladino video. I'm sorry, I'm going to put the uh, this 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 ad and the Paul Saladino video um, in the information for the link. Let me know what you think. Definitely check it out if you wear these pants. Be careful. Um, I'll be coming back at you with some other information soon. Thank you for watching. Peace.